Welcome to the Finding Hope Show. I'm your host, Alyssa Massey, and I am thrilled that you've joined me because my goal is to inspire you to be happy and hopeful in your everyday lives. In this show, you can expect to gain hope and encouragement through some of life's most pressing issues regarding health, business, relationships, faith, and much more. Let's face it, the world is not getting any better, but we do. Join me once a week to discover your highest potential as we learn to put God first in everything and find hope in a turbulent world. Welcome everyone to the Finding Hope Show. I hope you're having a magnificent week. Last week, I gave you some insight into my own history with depression and anxiety. This week, I want to provide you details on how to deal with this very large burden crippling our families and our children. Recently, a pastor and father, Jared Wilson, committed suicide. This happened shortly before World Suicide Prevention Day, and September is in fact World Suicide Prevention Month. Not only that, but two of my oldest children have two classmates that have committed suicide just recently. And finally, my own pastor, Craig Rochelle, has also opened up about recently struggling with anxiety and has made the smart choice of seeking professional help. The point is, everyone knows someone who is affected by depression and anxiety, whether it be critical or mild, short-term or long-term. According to the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance, 33 to 50% of anorexia patients have a mood disorder such as depression. Over 20% of Americans with an anxiety or mood disorder such as depression have an alcohol or other substance use disorder. Major depressive disorder is more prevalent in women than in men. 1.9 million children ages 3 to 17 have diagnosed depression. Depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide and is a major contributor to the overall global burden of disease. And finally, women are almost twice as likely as men to have had depression. So what do we make of all this? Friends, none of us have the answers, but we know that none of us are immune to this increasing problem. We don't have the answers to Jared Wilson's death or those poor children that recently committed suicide and the millions of others that have. But what we do have is each other. We can bring awareness and offer hope because we know that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10 says the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. We need to be aware of the enemy's tactics, but focus on living our life to the full. You may have heard that scripture several times, that the enemy has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But we must put emphasis on the fact that Jesus has come to give us life and live it to the full. That is what our purpose is intended to be. So you and I have to reclaim what is already Hours. We just have to make it through and not give up. So how do people with depression and anxiety live their lives to the full when there's constant attacks on them every day or they're consumed by worry and fear? Well, first understand that like I just said, Jesus intended our lives to be lived to the full. And knowing that that is our purpose We know that we can make it through this. Don't give up. I believe there is an answer, but it's not a quick fix. Sufferers of anxiety and depression need ongoing support and grit, and God gives us the strength to proceed. There are many causes of depression and anxiety, 
And even in my own story, there have been many factors at play. Some was caused from my own poor decisions. I once suffered with an imbalance in my gut. If you don't believe me, Google it. There is a relationship between the good bacteria in your gut and your mood. And last, there was a time there was chemical imbalance at play. Keep in mind, it's important to know the cause of your anxiety and depression so that we are more equipped to properly address it. The causes of your anxiety or depression could be A, circumstantial, B, sociological, C, a chemical imbalance, or D, your gut health. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I did go to the school of hard knocks. However, it is important that you speak with your doctor about your concerns, but also be aware that your doctor may not have the answers you're searching for, as in my case. One thing is certain. If we seek God for our answers, he will always lead us in the right direction. Like I said, my doctor did not have the answers. But for me, God did. Above all else, the devil is behind all of these factors. It's not like he says, oh, hey, it's the devil here. I'm going to come and attack your family now. No, he's sneaky about it. And this is why he pulls the wool over our head so many times. We're not prepared to deal with it. Or some of us may not know that he even exists. But becoming aware that there is an enemy that is attempting to destroy you may just help you out a little. So once we figure out a little bit more of what may be going on with our bodies and our minds, how do we attempt to get help? First of all, if you are considering taking your life, don't hesitate. Immediately call the Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. The following are some ways to deal with your depression. Number one, first step after you know the possible cause, pray about what to do next and then start acting. James 2.17 says, In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Faith without works is dead. God may or may not miraculously heal us, but we must immediately start reaching out. Number two, get support. Support is crucial in our quest for help. Support motivates us, and not just any support will work. We must find positive support. For example, in my own recovery, the AA group I attended every day was a major factor in my healing and sobriety. Why? Because many people were going through the same struggles as myself and offered genuine help. Whereas before, I had fake friends with hidden agendas. And this only hurt me. Support could come from a pastor, a loved one, or a specified group, or even an online group. Remember, friends and family are supposed to be supportive and encouraging in your dealing with depression and anxiety. I'll repeat that. Friends and family are supposed to be supportive and encouraging in your dealing with depression and anxiety. Which brings me to my next point. Number three, avoid negativity. It's very important to avoid negativity at all in your life, but especially in your healing. Your mind is already flooded with negative thoughts to begin with. And in order to break free from this bondage, you have to avoid any negativity that may surround you. Number four, find Christian counseling. You don't just need any counseling. Be very careful in your search. You need someone who is an expert at mental health, but also knows Christ so that you are getting advice that is biblical. There are many people, including professionals out there, that have hidden agendas. You need someone you can trust and someone that understands the value of making God the center of everything. Remember, the world will fail us, but God always has our best interest at heart. And even once you find a Christian counselor, still, Pray about it, because they too could have a hidden agenda. Pray about it 
and seek the counselor, the Holy Spirit. Number five, get healthy. Do not underestimate the power of exercise and nutrition regarding your mental health and anxiety. This has also been a major factor in my own recovery. Exercise releases dopamine, the feel-good hormone. And as a recovering alcoholic and a drug addict, I thrived off dopamine. This increases your chances of overcoming feelings of dread and doom. Make exercise and your food choices a daily habit. First thing in the morning, get up, read your devotions, write out your goals for the day, including what you're going to eat and get busy. Nutrition goes hand in hand with exercise and is even more important. You are what you eat. Unless you are a teenager with a extremely high metabolism, all of us have to be concerned with what we are putting in our bodies. But it's not just about gaining or losing weight. What we put in our bodies affects how we feel. Get rid of the junk, the sugar, and artificial anything and stick to whole foods the way God intended. I once fasted, although this was extremely hard for me. (laughs) I believe my body went into shock getting rid of all the sugar. But I do remember as I ate only vegetables for a few days, I had never felt this good in my entire life. I think that most of us don't even know how good we are designed to feel because we are always bombarded with crap. Number six, never give up. Most people will give up and have gave up before the miracle even happens. I would have given up on recovery, but I I chose to stay strong. I knew there was something more. There was that seed that God had planted a long time before. So I chose to take the hard route. But I can tell you now, it is so worth it. And right now, I am here in this moment sharing with you. And if I would have gave up, this would have never happened. Friends, the enemy did want that to happen. Just like the many mistakes that I made all throughout my 20s, I was not aware of my calling at the time, and I did cave in to the devil, and that's why I fell far behind. But it's never too late, and God uses everything. And not only that, He uses it for our good. I didn't die. I didn't give up. I got the faith in God. I did the work. I had the grit. And now I'm here helping you to get something positive out of this message. And if you, friends, stay persistent in your quest for help and positive change and choose to don't give up, you too will be helping others, giving God all the glory. Your story will be a testimony for God's greatness, just like the stories of the great characters in the Bible who God used to do great and miraculous things. God used them too. And their story ended well, just like your story is going to end. Don't give up. There is hope and help is on the way. I hope you have enjoyed this episode on depression and that you can find hope in your anxiety and your sorrow. We all know that life can be pretty stressful and we can all benefit from ways to achieve more peace in our lives. So next episode, I'm going to do exactly that. After the rain, there is always sunshine. In my own life, I can attest to that. My prayer for you is that the next season of your life is full of peace, love, and joy. And I believe it, it is right around the corner. Get your hopes up because the best is yet to come. If you would like to receive updates on all my latest news, including information about books, upcoming speeches, promotions, and much more, kindly go to alyssamassey.com and enter in your email. And don't forget to hit subscribe to this podcast.